Welcome to our service at Holy Communion. We have a few notices at the beginning. Uh, good news from the Ark, we've managed to appoint a head teacher. We've been looking for one for a long time, so this is really, really exciting news. Uh, the staff met her on Friday and they all love it. It's, it's fantastic. Second notice, Christmas. We are working out, we're planning, we're scratching our heads, we're really thinking about how we can make Christmas as special as possible this year. Um, needless to say, kindness letters, cards, phone calls, all these things will really help. So I just encourage all of us to get involved in the kindness of Christmas. Let's make this Christmas the kindest yet, because it's been such a tough year for so many of us. And then thirdly, this is a very special uh, Sunday. It's the last Sunday of the Anglican year, the, uh, the Festival of Christ the King. A really wonderful way of finishing the year. We look to Jesus at the end of the year, the close of the year. And uh, that's exactly what we're planning to do, actually, in our Advent service of healing and wholeness. It's, it's been a hard year for many of us. And this uh, service on the 13th of uh, December, it's going to be online. Uh, it's going to be an opportunity for us all as a church to gather together, to look to Jesus and to receive healing from him, whether it's physical healing, emotional or spiritual healing. I'm sure we all need it, or our loved ones need it. Uh, the reason it's online, uh, well, it's fairly obvious, really. There are lots of us who we want to come, uh, will have access to that service, who uh, probably wouldn't be able to come to church because they're at risk. So we want to make it online, so we just allow access for as many people as possible. Let's start with some prayer. Let's say together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading. We have two readings today. It's a special service. This is from Ephesians 1, starting at verse 15. This is Paul writing to the Ephesians who feel downtrodden, they feel bruised, they feel discouraged, uh, and many of them feel broken by what they're having to face. And this is what he says, I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. An amazing truth that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Uh, now's a good time to pause and to go over to Nigel, uh, because Nigel's got our second reading and his amazing sermon. Uh, and if you finish pausing, uh, I'm now going to go on to our time of Holy Communion. Let's draw near to God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, 
and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sin. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. So, as we gather around this table, take this, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, and remember his body broken for you. And take this, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, and remember his blood shed for you. end of this Anglican year, let's uh, hope and pray that we're really coming to the end of all the difficulties. And uh, let's gather around Jesus together and receive all that he has for us today. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. May the blessing of God, who is our Father, who is the Son, and who is the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you now and forever and with all those who you love. Amen. God bless you.